Hi, my name is Dr. Raja Adnan Ahmed and I'm a psychiatrist working in UK and I'm trying to make this video series where I am tackling some of the commonly asked interview questions which you may encounter when you go for your NHS job interview. This is a, a particularly for the benefit of the IMGs who may not have seen these questions before. So one commonly asked question is about audit which you may encounter in the interview. Now they may ask you uh, this in different ways. They may ask you what is your understanding of a clinical audit? Have you ever done a clinical audit? How an audit is done? Do you understand what is an audit cycle? Or they may ask you what is a quality improvement project and how that is done so to answer this let us first tackle the uh, definition of a clinical audit uh, then you can go on internet and read a different uh, there will be several different uh, definitions of clinical audit but you need to have a simple and basic understanding of clinical audit a simple definition would be that clinical audit is when we uh, uh, we look at our current practice and, and assess it against set guidelines and find any deficiencies and make improvement this is a very very simple way of explaining uh, clinical audit the second step would be to actually understand the steps which are included in a clinical audit. So let me give you an example of a clinical audit I've done and then we can talk about the different steps. So when I was a junior doctor, I started my uh, very first job in psychiatry on a psychiatric ward. And I realized that one of the protocols uh, which uh, we were supposed to follow was that every patient who was getting admitted to a psychiatric ward was supposed to have uh, uh, a detailed physical examination, some blood tests done, ECG done. So all these physical investigations were needed to be done when somebody was admitted on a psychiatric ward. But I realized those things were not happening. So I discussed it with my senior and then I said, I won't like to do an audit on that. So here I have identified a problem. And the next step would be to actually identify the guideline. What are the current guidelines? Uh, what are the good practices? Or are there any national guidelines available or any local trust guidelines? So we had the trust guidelines with us and, and junior doctors were expected to follow them. Um, then I started to assess our current practice with those uh, clinical guidelines. So the, the way I did it was that I looked uh, retrospectively. So had, I had the guidelines with me and I had the standards which were supposed to be followed. And I took around 20 cases and looked retrospectively in the last month how many patients have been admitted and when they were admitted, uh, were these uh, steps followed? You know, for example, were, did, did they have a full uh, and thorough uh, clinical examination, physical examination, and did they have the blood sent? Did they have the ECG done? So once I've identified the deficiencies and identified that those things were not happening and which things were not happening, uh, then I took this to uh, our local junior doctors. I took it to the local trust uh, uh, postgrad and did a presentation of uh, what is expected of us as junior doctors and, and you know what should we be doing and how we are failing to uh, achieve those certain standards. Next part was me for to make some recommendation of how these practices could be improved and I had made those recommendations. I followed them through and make sure that uh, those recommendations was followed through and the junior doctors were constantly aware of their the, their responsibilities and the, the, the practices which were uh, expected of them. After around three months time, we started to re-audit the whole thing again uh, using the same standards which were expected of the junior doctors. And now this time we were uh, seeing that if uh, our uh, uh, changes which we were making and the recommendation we were making and all the hard work we were doing uh, to make sure those uh, guidelines are followed, has they actually made a difference? Um, so the second audit was done and the second audit showed that there was some degree of improvement, but there were still some areas which needed further improvement. But by doing that, I've actually completed a audit cycle, which included two different audits, uh, which included improvement of a service. And so therefore this form uh, for me, it formed the a service improvement project. So these are the steps uh, when you're doing an audit, you uh, identify an uh, area which needs improvement or identify an area where you think the standards are not being followed, where the clinical practice is not ideal or less than ideal. Uh, then you find certain uh, guidelines or set standards which are expected to be followed. Uh, the third thing would be to audit uh, your current practices against those set guidelines. Uh, then the fourth step would be to uh, 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 make some recommendations and some changes. Uh, and that will complete your one audit, you know, the, um, and, and when you uh, when you make and implement those changes uh, and then you re-audit it after a certain time, uh, following the, again the same steps for an audit, uh, that would complete the audit cycle and that will make a, a quality improvement project for yourself. Remember, the ultimate goal of a clinical audit is to improve the patient care and improve the quality of the service. 
So if you have done an audit uh, and when you ask this audit question in an interview, it is a good time to explain to the panel that what have you done, what you learned and, you know, how did you follow the process of an audit, you know, and how can you show them that you understand the concepts behind the audit. But if you haven't done an audit, you know, even then, you know, you need to show the panel that you actually understand the basic principle that goes uh, in a clinical audit and how it could be done, uh, how it could be, uh, how the changes could be implemented and how a quality of a service could be improved. Remember when you're going for an NHS job interview, please read the definitions of clinical audit and you should be able to explain that in simpler words. The second thing you should read about is an audit cycle and what is the difference between a simple audit and a quality improvement project and how do you complete an audit cycle. And the third thing you need to understand is that uh, why we actually do these audits uh, and you know the whole concept of improving patient care and the quality improvement of a service which, which you can explain to the panel and that is what they are trying to establish that you uh, are a doctor who understand this questions because as a doctor in NHS this is our responsibility not just to provide the clinical care but actually look at ourselves and see uh, how are we practicing uh, are we actually meeting the certain standards which are set for us or is our service meeting that standards if if it's not then it is also our responsibility to make sure that we improve the quality of service and ultimately the patient care so thank you very much for listening to me I hope this was useful and in the next video I will try to tackle another question thank you